Normally, I don't make videos covering updates coming into Call of Duty, but this is too big to not talk about. First is the roadmap coming in for season one that drops in about a week, but the thing that popped out the most to me is the game mode Vortex. I've always thought it'd be cool to have some sort of zombies multiplayer hybrid mode where you can use things from zombies against like your friends or other people online, and they finally added something like that into the game with Vortex. Their description of the mode is this is a free-for-all mode. One player spawns in with the infamous zombies wonder weapon, the one-shot ray gun. Whoever eliminates the operator with the ray gun becomes a new owner of this powerful and otherworldly pistol. Vortex takes place on three remix multiplayer maps, Satan's Quarry, which is going to be Quarry, I assume, Spore Yard, which is probably going to be Scrap Yard, and Tetanus, which I think is going to be Rust. This sounds amazing because we're going to get like Dark Aether versions of Rust, scrapyard and quarry and it's gonna look beautiful i hope that this mode stays in the game for a while and isn't just like a limited time mode it does say ltm up here but i hope it is in here for like longer than just this season even though it does only come in mid-season and i also hope there's a way to play this in custom games after it's removed from just multiplayer because just getting screenshots and thumbnails for me as a youtuber on those maps would be fucking crazy but while we're on the topic of zombies let's get into some more stuff that's going to be added into the mode we're gonna be getting some new story missions i don't know if they're gonna keep adding to the story every single season or if it's gonna be like every other season thing i'm not sure how it's gonna go personally i haven't completed all the acts yet because i've just been given the mode a slow burn but i hope the new story missions are good we're also getting dark aether rifts which i'll get into that more in a second we're getting the vr 11 wonder weapon which was leaked a while ago we're getting some new schematics hopefully some for pack a punch three and then maybe the scorcher or i've heard rumors that it could be that one ghost bike the blood burner i think it's called there'll be some prestige challenges which i don't know what that means maybe it's gonna be something similar to dark ops or just gonna be stuff you can do to unlock like like how cold war did it with prestige tokens where you can get older calling cards and emblems and things like that i guess we'll see and then there's also a new warlord but if we take a quick look at the trailer here we can see a preview of what some of the new zombie stuff looks like in game and here is like the very start of a game and it looks like they are coming down out of the helicopter and there's a whole new objective type looking thing here i'm assuming this is going to be a new contract a new mission you can do or it could just be something completely different and i just don't know anything which i don't but there's also a clip here of like an operator placing a bomb or like a device on something here could be another new contract and in the trailer we also get like a storage container blowing open and a bunch of zombies coming out of it could be another good contract for grinding but what i'm seeing here is that there's a lot of aether crystals on the ground like this just looks like it's out in the open of like urzikstan but we're seeing these crystals here that we would get in those outlast contracts so i'm hoping this is their way of creating new hordes of zombies and spawning in like hvts and things like that for you to fight outside of those like contracts where you're like doing outlast and not really doing the objective and getting the kills or doing the spore contract just to get kills maybe this is their way of like hey we're gonna throw like 300 zombies at you once you kill them the contract's over but this is all speculation we also see the big worm orcus i think is his name pop up i think these are going to be switching from not just the final boss in the first three acts to something that you can just find around the map and fight kind of like how order was an outbreak then here at the end of the trailer we get a little preview of the dark aether rifts it looks like you go through a portal like you would an outbreak moving through zones they showed us a little mr peaks but the thing i'm the most excited about i don't know if you guys caught it is that this looks like urzikstan in the dark aether i've always said throughout all of cold war that the dark aether has been criminally underused and now it looks like we might get the entire war zone map or at least good portions of it in the dark aether and i'm really excited about it like this looks crazy i i cannot wait for this then we also get this little preview of the dark aether throwing knife i'm not sure how good it's gonna be or if you're gonna be able to pick it up after you use it but here in this clip they show the operator throwing it at a mega abomination and doesn't look like it does a whole lot to it. Ooh, and what is this? I, I didn't scroll down this far into the zombie stuff yet, but there's a little preview here of what like the Dark Aether looks like. And there's this operator skin that almost reminds me of Zykov just because of the gas mask, but it looks like crystals are growing out of the operator. They also have a little teddy bear here, but this just looks so sweet. But under this little preview, it says, new story act, a massive gateway has appeared in the exclusion zone. Investigate the area and engage in a new end game content. And then an explanation for the Dark Aether rips, it says a new labyrinth-like experience challenging squads to complete a series of objectives in the given time. Find sickles to unlock the Dark Aether Rifts and earn rewards on completion. That sounds like fun. And then it just talks about the new Wonder Weapon Warlord and all that good stuff. And then here we get a nice little preview of Orcus or whatever the worm's name is here on the beach. Also looks like there's like a spaceship up here. But it says, as operators continue to push into the exclusion zone, a new anomaly appears. Sent to investigate, Operation Deadbolt Strike teams are pulled through to the other side in their first major encounter with the Dark Aether. And it says, 
first major encounter, implying there could be more in the future, and I sure hope there is. And then it says, expect a new story mission that begins in the next act of content with tasks that will test your abilities in the fights ahead. The season one update brings additional challenges and rewards, including new prestige challenges to explore, a new warlord to battle, an exciting new wonder weapon, new schematics and acquisitions, new secrets, and introducing the deadly but lucrative Dark Aether Rifts. Oh, and they have a little bit more on the rifts here. Dark Aether Rifts bring rewards to those who brave their challenges. These otherworldly labyrinths are located inside of the Dark Aether, where the players and their squad have 30 minutes to complete a series of increasingly chaotic objectives to earn exceptional rewards. I wonder if that 30 minutes is in addition to the actual game, like the 45 minutes that you get there, like it would be in like going to the Dr. Jensen mission or anything like that. Or if you have to go into it, you already have to have like all your schematics and everything going into it, like a pack a punch two crystal, you know, have all your perks already in, in your inventory as you go in to make sure you're prepared. Or if this is something you can go to towards the later half of the game to extend it. And we get a little glance here at the VR 11 and it says VR 11, shoot zombies and transform them into humans or blast humans to mutate them into friendly zombies. So it's basically like brain rot the gun and somebody left their mouse cursor here in the screenshot it wasn't me this time oh and it looks like we're getting a dog bones command so maybe you can spawn in with one of those brain rotted dogs you can get from going to those hellhound dog houses it looks like there's golden armor plates i'm not sure what those do yet the aether blade and then there's peaks right here oh wait maybe it explains it and then it says dog bone consume the dog bone with some of the strongest friendly hellhound companion the pet hellhound will follow you and attack nearby threats until its health runs out this season one item can help take the heat off when it's really needed so that means you can just summon it in whenever you need it like you don't have to start the game and immediately use or the second that you throw all your chunks of meat into the thing, you get the hellhound. You could be in a situation where you're like, oh, I might go down here or I need a little extra hand. You can just go ahead and activate it. And for the golden armor plate, it says consuming the new golden armor plate replaces your armor carrier with plates that automatically repair over time. In addition to providing these are additional damage resistances. That's crazy. And it says the Aether Blade is a special throwing knife with infinite ammo and a boomerang like combat style. So maybe like the Hell's Retriever from Mob of the Dead. That'd be sweet. After striking the enemy, the Aether Blade locates the next nearest enemy to hit before returning to its operator. So it is kind of like the Hell's Retriever that's sweet and we also get another preview of the warlord looks like we might be fighting him in the dark aether or something close to the dark aether but that's just everything we're getting in zombies of course Warzone's going to be coming out with this update as well we're going to be getting urzik stand without zombies for the first time and then vondell will be coming back asika island there's gonna be a new gulag it looks like plunder is actually making a return as well there's gonna be a lot different from last year's version of warzone all the movement options are gonna feel a lot better feel a lot smoother and it's gonna have that higher time to kill i think i'm gonna give warzone another shot this year and for multiplayer we're getting a few new maps like meat here everybody's gonna be b hopping on meat grease which looks beautiful wish it was a little bit lighter and not as foggy but i like these little like red almost cherry blossom looking trees dropping some petals down with the, the white and green background it looks great rio actually looks very nice as well i'm speaking all visually i don't know how these maps are going to play yet and then there's training facility here which is like a 2v2 gunfight map also looks like we're getting a new mode all or nothing and it says to play in with a throwing knife and no ammo get one elimination to activate the scavenger perk allowing you to retrieve ammo pickups for your weapon the first to land 20 eliminations wins so that sounds like fun i don't know how often i'm going to play it but you guys know i love the throwing knife and we'll be getting a holiday limited time event with Santa's sleigh ground and it says seasons eating Santa Nas is here to spread horror and fear complete the event challenges to earn rewards and visit classic holiday theme maps including shipmas and hangover just try not to get bitten expect more information on this event and additional limited time modes closer to mid-season we're also getting headquarters in at mid-season team gunfight it also looks like we're getting some new gear or perks or whatever you want to call them this one's called the assassin's vest or the stealthy killer in parentheses it says you get two equipment slots lethal and tactical field upgrade is removed you get three gear slots and it says kills don't display skulls you're immune to uav and enemy radar effects including wall stationary it also says duplicate effects do not stack so if you have ghost and hijacked you're not going to get double the benefits and then of course we have a few new weapons coming into this season as well we have the xrk stalker sniper rifle this is going to be in the battle pass and it says the sector for it is an a4 and the description of it says for one hit eliminations look no further the XRK Stalker Sniper Rifle deals massive damage and is highly customizable to support multiple playstyles. Enhance the weapon's velocity and stability and strike from the shadows or improve its handling and capabilities to become a quickscoping menace. And then we also have the Ram 7 Assault Rifle that says this is going to be in the Battle Pass Sector A7. And the description says when you need power and stability, the Ram 7 is a sure bet. The weapon deals solid damage at a close to medium range and in controlled bursts can complete 
and compete from afar. And then we're getting a launcher added in here, the Storm Ender. I hope this is good against the Storm Caller and zombies, but this is gonna be in the Battle Pass A12. This is a cool looking launcher, I guess. It's almost like shotgun looking. But well, the description of it says, this is a state-of-the-art weapon system fires a localized EMP on a slight delay. Destroys tactical and lethal equipment and temporarily disables other electronic devices. This brand new weapon has the power to shoot down specific kill streaks and take out drones and its lockdown capability. With unlimited recharging ammo, the ability to disable and delay enemy equipment, this weapon serves as a very real shock to the system, though damage to the operators is minimal. So it looks like a lot of these challenges, at least for this weapon, is going to be like taking down certain score streaks or things like that. Not that the launchers have a lot of camos in this game anyways, but it looks like it's going to be very hard to kill people with them. This is more like of a support streak kind of thing, like something to take down support streaks, I mean. And then we also have the HRM9, which is an SMG that's going to be unlocked in season through the armory. Not very happy about that, but maybe it'll be decent. It says a light yet stable nine millimeter submachine gun for close quarters combat and putting down enemies quickly. Sporting a high fire rate and excellent handling ability, the HMR9 is the perfect fit for aggressive running gun play style. So maybe I'll like it. We're also getting the TAC Evolver. Evol I can't read, but this is an LMG. And it says the advanced multi-caliber LMG is capable of firing 7.62 or 5.56 with minimal adjustments to the weapon. This all new light machine gun is capable of taking down both infantry and artillery, whichever chooses to cross its path. And it's also previewing a few new aftermarket attachments. And this sure does look like a flamethrower right here. That's going to be fun in zombies. It says this is the Jack Purifier, a new flamethrower underbarrel attachment for multiple weapons available via the season one battle pass. And then we have a few more here, which is the Jack Beholder rifle kit. So it looks like a revolver here is going to be able to be turned into a rifle, which is going to be crazy. And then we have a double barrel kit here. What gun is this? Is that the striker? It can't be. There's no way. And also the Jack Bullseye, which is an optic. So it says the purifier is compatible with the MCW, MTZ, the Holger, the DG56, the SVA, the Ram, the MTZ, the Bass B, Sidewinder, and Riveter. Oh, and the double barrel kit is compatible with the AMR9. That's going to be a lot of fun, actually. And the Jack Thunder LMG kit is coming for the Sidewinder, the battle rifle. Dominate lanes and hold objects with the LMG conversion kit for the Sidewinder battle rifle that brings a large capacity magazine and ramps in fire rate the longer you hold on the trigger. That's crazy. And the Jack BRB... And it says compatibility, many assault rifles, submachine guns, battle rifles, marksman rifles, and sniper rifles. And it says go loud. This compensator borders on excessive, offering a phenomenal reduction to recoil while significantly increasing muzzle report, resulting in an extended red dot on enemy radars. Okay. So you'll be able to be seen on the radar a lot better, but you'll have way less recoil. And we have the Jack Bullseye, which its compatibility is redacted. We have a very low profile dot optic. Limited interference from framework offers especially clear sight of picture. The glassless optic, which also compatibility is redacted. Then we have the signal burst for the Holger 556, a conversion kit for accuracy and controlling with four round bursts. And then the rifle kit is going to be for the TYR here. It says a long heavy barrel that offers the best increase in range, improves recoil and damage range, converting this handgun into a single shot rifle. And then we have a headhunter carbine conversion, which turns the rival nine into a three round burst. And then we have our new weekly challenges here. And this does not look as good as the Golden River challenge at all. And it looks like these new weekly challenges can be done in multiplayer zombies and now war zone in the battle royale tab and this is explaining the prestige system a little bit it says unlocked on rank 56 you get a new emblem four calling card challenges one mastery calling card challenge okay on the prestige 2 at rank 100 rank 150 is prestige 3 rank or prestige 4 is rank 200 prestige 5 is rank 250 and that is the level cap for the season so each of those prestiges will have its own mastery challenges which could be fun to do and then they also said they are not doing shit with dmz but that's basically it for the new stuff coming in the season one update i just had to share some of it with you but i'm gonna get out of here thank you guys for watching i truly appreciate all your love and support and i'll see you in the next one later